Hey, what, wait a minute. What, what happened? What happens next? Come on, let's see the next episode. That's it? What? The show was canceled after that. The Changeling season one has come to an end with honestly more breadcrumbs than trying to eat a Nature Valley granola bar. Was this a good finale? Eh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But along with some minor reveals and backstory, what to expect if there is a season two, and of course, our overall thoughts of the series. I'm J Buck. Welcome back to J Buck Studios. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like and subscribe button as it really helps out the channel and protects me from John Matrix, who is just launching these trees in this episode. Now, let's get into episode eight of The Changeling. Straight to it, this was 100% a lackluster season finale. I mean, I mean, come on. How can you waste five of the 30 minutes doing a recap and intro for things that were pretty obvious? Like, we already knew everything about William and that he was behind this whole operation. I, I'm frustrated, that's all. But this is a bittersweet farewell, revenge, and reunion episode for Cal. She, like all of the other wise ones, had lost a child of her own, with all of this very much tied in with the Greek mythology revolving around Callisto, in that uh, Zeus had masqueraded himself as Artemis, tricking Callisto into sleeping with him, and giving birth to her son Arcus. However, due to this, she was cast out and turned into her earth sign or bear form. This is why Cal teases showing her claws when fighting William. Anyway, as the myth continues, Arcus was out hunting one day and ran into the still bear form Callisto. As Arcus is about to unknowingly kill his mother, Zeus steps in, transforming them into the constellations of Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, which we see after Cal's death. And this is them being reunited forever, and almost a mate good for what Zeus had done to Cal. I, I, I like this backstory a nod, and it is a fitting end for Cal. However, one thing that is definitely not revealed in the show but mentioned in the book, is that Greta and Cal are biological sisters. What? This is why she's deeply hurt by the scene in the destroyed library, regrets bringing her back to the island, and why her fight with William is so emotional. It's her last redemption for not only her son that was taken from her, but also the sister that was killed too. So, uh, <laughs> the, the, the more you know. A few episodes ago, we witnessed Emma surrounded by some sort of blue glowing aura. Confused is uh, putting it lightly. And once again here, we see her eyes begin to glow like some sort of superhero warming up her powers. I, I do think the explanation behind this, though, is what Cal mentioned to Apollo. The things mothers will do for the ones that they love, the unconditional love that they have for their child, and the determination and motivation that they will stop at nothing to give them a better life than their own. So I think Emma has been able to channel this unconditional love and manifest it into actual sorcery. When Apollo hears Emma's voice, maybe it's, you know, a memory, but could be her actually communicating with him over miles with her newfound powers. We see her in Forest Hills, and the carousel that she approaches is the Forest Park Carousel, a historic carousel located in Forest Park, Queens, New York. Surprisingly, this was featured in a previous episode as a quick flashback to Apollo and Emma on a date, but with it being what Emma is drawn to, it being mentioned in the fairy tale book, and the glowing aura around it, I am betting big that it's covered by glamour magic, and this is going to be some sort of hidden portal that takes Emma into a different realm where changelings, fairies, and other creatures exist, but also where, you know, baby Brian has been taken. I really hope that they go full-on weird fairy tale with it, but I guess uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Two final bits are, yes, uh, Apollo actually learning that baby Brian is a changeling creature. This is something that we had theorized last week from the quick flashes of Brian's gravestone and what looked like Apollo in a shallow grave. Here it is a very much what we thought, and Apollo being bitten by the creature, which will no doubt change his mindset towards Emma and her quote, acting crazy in the days before she went missing. Now, I'm curious if this is solely a tease or if we'll get a more fleshed out version of this and baby Brian reveal in season two, if again, there is one. 
The second is William hanging out with all of his online 4chan pals. These are no doubt the, you know, 10,000 strong Calvary folk that he had mentioned earlier and the ones who helped him hack into Emma's phone and rain down fire upon North Brother Island. They may have, you know, hacked into some sort of drone or something to cause those explosions. So I'm curious if they have a worldwide connected baby snatching operation set up. It's, it's a quick scene, but it does look like all of the others are wearing masks, almost paper bags, like full-on bombastic bag man, Spider-Man suit style. But from the looks of the room, there is, you know, soundproofing on the walls, multiple screens, speakers, and a microphone. So I'm betting that this is William's Forest Hills home. And if you, you didn't know, this is more than likely a flashback to before he was hurt on the island. Now, the interesting thing is what is shown on his two main screens. This is no doubt the same tunnel that's quickly shown after with this mysterious person crawling, revealing a giant monster's eye. This is William, limping and struggling from his injuries on the island. So yeah, he is alive and going to return for a season two. It's pretty clear. But the unclear thing is the monster. The eye and shriek very much to me feels like an aquatic or amphibian slash reptile like creature. We know it's a she as mentioned by both William and Cal and I've been throwing big money on the sea serpent of Norway or even it being a leshy but this looks like potentially a land creature because of the cave but then again they did say that the creature or the big one could swim. If and I mean, if it is sticking in line with Norwegian lore and myths, it could be a troll, complementing the fairy tale aspect to everything. Wh wh whatever it is, it's gonna be massive, it is massive, because it was just launching trees like they were little tiny pebbles. Moving over to theories, one thing that I am still sticking to, hoping it comes true in season two, is that Apollo is actually a god. We've already talked about this, you know, with uh, various signs in uh, some of our previous breakdowns, but in this finale, there are a couple more pieces of evidence to back up this theory. The little girl calls Apollo a superhero, with him recovering from what looked like a massive fall like it was nothing. But during this, he hears Emma's voice say, you don't see, but you will. And I see this as two things. One is that he'll find out the truth behind baby Brian, which happens at the end of this episode. But I also think Emma is hinting that he's going to discover even more about himself. He is more than a man, a superhero, the sun god Apollo. Can anyone say? Power couple? Power couple. And for shits and giggles, I'm saying William's voiceover in the opening, mentioning Emma giving birth on the A-train, and showcasing the newspaper with the headline of Delivery Aided by Four Teenagers. All of this is hinting at a looming apocalypse. A-train, A for apocalypse, and the four teenagers that helped deliver baby Brian. Hence, they are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Even their outfits in episode one connect to the four horsemen's horse colors of red, white, black, and the pale horse. I am being a little generous with the coloring, but if this is correct, baby Brian or something involved with him is about to bring upon the apocalypse in some form. Am I reaching? Sure, maybe, but I don't care. <laughs> let me know, let me know your thoughts on this uh, in the comments. Now, at the time of writing and editing this, there is no official word on a season two. Only rumors and a quick tease mentioning season one in a behind-the-scenes video. And all of these things become very important in season one. Yeah, yeah, there it is, there it is! But with the way everything ends and a bit more of the book to actually still cover, a season two has got to be on the horizon. We're going to have a full breakdown of what we know, can expect, and what is still left in the book to cover dropping tomorrow or the next day, so please be sure to stay tuned and, and check that video out. Overall, The Changeling Season 1 had some great intrigue, some high highs, but definitely some meandering lows and subplots that truly felt like filler. I, I don't like using that word, but yeah, it, it was filler. What I think Season 1 did right was getting you absolutely invested in this weird world and mystery at hand right from the get-go. Personally, I, I was returning every single week following the breadcrumbs, searching for the backgrounds of scenes, looking for little hidden things, and doing 
far too much research to understand the different mythological influences and nods that they had placed in this series. Lakeith Stanfield, Clark Bacco, Adina Porter, the, the core cast really turn in powerful, riveting, emotional performances that again kept me beyond invested in whether or not some baby was real or a bundle of sticks. I'm going to give season 1 a 7 out of 10. Honestly, it started like as a 10 out of 10 show for me, but with the momentum really halting once Apollo got to Cal's Island and the final three episodes drastically detouring from the core mystery at hand with the finale feeling like it was like on fast forward. I I lost influence and kind of forgot what really mattered. The show in general got caught up too much with its tendrils of mystery that it then forgot to feed us any sort of answers here or there. I mean, what the heck is Emma's third wish? What about her mom? Where exactly is Emma and where she's going? And what truly is William? There is a lot set up, but dear lord, please tell us something. Also, why why was there that weird emotional pull from Apollo to the young girl Gale? Yes, he's always wanted to be a father, but it focused on the pair a little bit more, you know, with no payoff aside from, yeah, yeah, I'll care for you. But that is everything for the Changeling Season 1, and fingers crossed folks will get a Season 2 at least at least give us some concrete answers to what the heck is going on. But what did you think of this series overall? Strong start? Bad finish? Not enough answers to the mysteries? Let me know anything and everything in the comments below. Also, I'd like to personally thank everyone who stopped by weekly, watched these videos, commented, supported the channel, everything. Honestly, I am so, so appreciative. I think the next big series we'll cover is Monarch Legacy of the Monsters. It's like a Godzilla series next month on Apple. I cannot wait. It looks good. It's tied in with the movies. So please subscribe and stay tuned for that. Anyway, giveaway competitions have started up and we'll be giving away two copies of Across the Spider-Verse on the 15th of October. And all you got to do to get a chance of winning this is like this video. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the changeling. We pick the comments at random, and the winners of our last giveaway are on screen right now. So if that's you, message me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at my respective handle. And if you haven't, please check out all of my other social media accounts from my Shorts and Clips YouTube channel, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, everything. Any and all support, I really appreciate it. It helps the channel. It keeps me going, so thank you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.